Here is Anatoly again. So in this video I will show you how to make symmetric PWM carrier uh, for PWM and then later we'll put it into the separate block in uh, Vivado and uh, compare it with the sine wave to generate uh, two level PWM which can be used later in power electronics converters. So basically before we already did a trailing edge PWM carrier. And the difference is this time that uh, we need to give some information to the FPGA that uh, the carrier is either up counting or down counting. So yeah, first of all, um, we need to create a signal and uh, we can call it carrier direction and the type would be uh, standard logic. Okay, so yeah, then uh, what I also would like to change here, I want to pay, uh, I want to put a reset. So yeah, let maybe we do something like this, um, and we create a reset signal, and it would be input standard logic. And also, of course, it makes sense now to call it PWM, maybe symmetric, or just PWM carrier. Change the entity name. And also here. Okay, so we have a reset now, which means uh, that every time we have, uh, for example, zero at the input of the reset pin, uh, we'll have some initial conditions generated and when it turns into one our operation starts. So to put reset right into our process uh, we need to put it in this uh, sensitivity list which is specified here between the brackets uh, in the process. So we already have clock here and now we need to put reset. What happens next? Uh, we make an if condition. So if reset is zero then then we do some action. So what would be the action? The carrier direction, let's put it in, set it initially to one. And then we also uh, reset the carrier signal. And the carrier signal initially would be zeros, all zeros. So what we can do, we can write that all of them are zeros or otherwise we state something like this, others set to zero, uh, which means that all of the bits which belong to this uh, unsigned type of uh, carrier signal will be initially set to zero. So we're setting all of the bits to zero. Now we don't need this uh, statement anymore because we have it here. So we have if condition and uh, there should be else condition. So if reset is zero then we are in reset condition. So we can say like uh, initial or startup, yeah, whatever we want. And here we write else if, which means that when reset is one, and then every time we have the rising edge of the clock, uh, we do some action. Okay, so the first thing we want to do, so um, our amplitude, as we designed in the last time, was 15,000. And um, when the counter uh, or the scalar signal reaches uh, the value more than 15,000 minus 2, which is 14,999, obviously, then we reset it and basically it goes back to zero. In this case, we want to do something different. So what we want to do, we want to uh, change the direction. So the carrier direction, of course, we can do something like not carry it here and then it will just flip it but it is safer to set it to zero. So in this case, we will know that every time it is set to zero, it will change to the other uh, operation, to the other counting direction. And also we want to set um, the carrier signal to the maximum, which in this case is 15,000. And one way to do it, because uh, the type of this carrier signal is unsigned, we can use this function called to un unsigned. And this means that we are uh, converting the value inside the brackets with the number of bits specified here, we're converting it to unsigned. 
Okay, so we have if. Now we also need to generate the else if condition. So we already have okay, we have we already have else here. We just need to change it to else if and when the carrier is less or equal than two, which is this value. And what we do when this happens? So we can copy. We need to set the carrier signal to zero. And what we also need to do, we need to set the direction flag to one. So we have zero and we have one. Okay, so it is all for this loop. And now uh, we need to set the second loop, uh, second if else condition. So it's uh, the actual, actual PWM counter. Here we can call it PWM direction flag or direction bit. So the counter will be very simple. We already did it before. So if our direction is one, then we we add some value. Okay, in our case, let's make it two for now. Uh, you know, maybe counting all the way to 15,000 with 2 is too much. Maybe we can make it 10. But let's start with 2. We put else. And here, when it is opposite, so we have either 1 or 0, uh, we need to subtract it. And here we put and if. And... Yeah, I think that's all for this block. It should work. Maybe there could be some problems, but let's take a look. So I press Ctrl, uh, Alt A, not Ctrl A, Alt A. And here I say create file. And I call it, um, what was the name? The name was PWM carrier. So I call it P PWM carrier. So it's simple. And I already specified all of the ports, input ports, output ports, so I just can skip this part. And yeah, I can go directly to the file. I just need to wait until it is it appears here. It does. And I just copy paste everything. I save it to see if there are some problems. Okay, there is some problem. What is the problem? Problem number one, I need to put semicolon here. Problem number two. What is the problem number two? Else if Okay, problem number two, this one is carry signal. Problem number three, again semicolon. Okay, let me copy it and put it back so I don't need to make all of the changes here. Okay, let's simulate it. So for this, I go to the simulation sources here. And as a top module, I select the speed up lamp carrier. We've already done it uh, before, so just repetition. Then we need to run the simulation and then we'll have to specify the clock and the reset condition. So uh, let's reset the simulation. Clock, let's use the okay, 10, 10 nanosecond period. The reset is initially zero, run. And now let's change it to one. Okay, so we see there's some action going on here. So if we zoom out and take this and convert the waveform style to analog. Okay, so to me it looks like a trigonal wave, like symmetrical carrier for PWM. And uh, we can see here, uh, maybe we can change the radix, uh, decimal, and it counts from zero. Yeah, if we select this one and use the button, it counts from 0 to 15,000, uh, yeah, slightly more. So we can also check this area. So it counts to 15,000, then 15,000, then 15,000. So maybe what we can do here, maybe we can even do something like this. Uh, or... This is one thing. Another thing, um, okay, so we can put here 
generic um, brackets and put some parameters. So let's say pwm step. The type would be uh, what is the type uh, unsigned? Unsigned. Um, let's make it yeah integer. And initially it would be two. Save it. And we don't need semicolon here. Okay, so what I can do now, this one is integer. So basically I need to create some signal or variable. Let's create a variable and call it step variable is uh, unsigned. And uh, yeah, to make it simpler, we have this one for 16 bits. Let's make this one also 16 bits and And let's make it initially two sixteen bits. And here every time at the rising edge, okay, it's a variable, so we have to use this assignment. Um I think every time here we need to change this uh, to update the step variable and uh, put our pwm step here and okay so now we can also add it here and another one will be this one and also this so all of the uh, step counters step parameter we change so what it does, let's close our simulation, let's refresh the changes. Okay, so uh, let's try a little bit different way to simulate it and to put it all together uh, to generate the PWM. Uh, we want to create the block design and let's call it top, so it is our top module. And uh, we just need to wait a little bit. Now we can start adding our blocks which were created. So it is our compare block. It is the PWM carrier. And it is the oh, sine wave. Another block I want to add, uh, it is um, IP provided by Xilinx. And if I start typing clock here, it will give me simulation clock generator. So I just double click it. And if I move in here and see the parameters, we can select the frequency, the type of clock and uh, reset polarity, either it's uh, active low or high, and even the number of clocks before the reset happens. So now I can just connect all of the uh, blocks so by their ports together. So clocks and resets and uh, the sign and carrier before I connect them to the compare block, I want to make them as uh, external. I just press Ctrl T and to also reset here. So here now I can connect it again to signal and carrier to also make the pulse external. Now I can optimize the routing here. Let's try again. Yeah, this one's better. And so I save it. And before I simulate it, I need to create an VHDL wrapper around this block diagram. So it will create a wrapper with the same name and will become the top module. After I done it, if okay, before I simulate, I can double click here at PWM carrier and I can select the step. So let's make it 10 and let's simulate it. Okay, so uh, let's make this waveform as uh, analog right away, and this also. So now if I simulate it, um, yes. So if I simulate it now, what I see, 
I see the sine wave, I see the carrier, and I see the PWM output. Let's put it in a little bit different way. And um, yeah, maybe the sine wave we can make red and the PWM output gold.